After the Starship's first orbital test flight in April ended in failure, SpaceX is now upgrading the vehicle and its engines to prevent such mishaps during the next orbital attempt. One of the primary issues that SpaceX is currently working on is the failure of the stage separation mechanism. During an online discussion with Bloomberg journalist Ashley Vance on Twitter, Elon Musk said that SpaceX had recently decided to switch to a hot staging approach, which enables a more effective separation between the Starship's first and second stages. The original design called for the Super Heavy's engines to shut down after lifting the Starship out of the lower atmosphere. The ship would then separate and ignite its engines to continue to orbit. Hot staging is a different kind of approach that will avoid the coasting phase during stage separation. The technique has been used on Russian launch vehicles for decades and involves igniting the engines on the upper stage while it is still attached to its lower stage. This calls for some modifications to the Super Heavy booster. SpaceX is developing a customized open truss work extension for the top of the booster to allow the exhaust from the upper stage to escape while still attached to the booster. While the extension's design has not yet been revealed, a stainless steel section spotted at Starbase last month could be the mock-up of the extension. According to Musk, the switch to hot staging is expected to increase the payload to orbit capacity of Starship by approximately 10%. SpaceX will also add shielding to the top of the booster to protect it from the exhaust. So we, we shut down most of the engines on the booster, leaving just a few uh, running, and, and then at the same time start the engines on the ship or upper stage, which you can, obviously that results in kind of blasting the, the booster, so then you've got to protect the, the, the top of the boost stage from getting incinerated by the uh, upper stage engines. You, you don't want to be coasting, you don't want to be in a situation where the engines are not on because you just immediately start falling back to Earth. There's, there's a meaningful payload to, to orbit advantage with hot staging. Let's say, in this case, roughly 10% improvement. If, if, you, if you basically just never stop thrusting, <laughs> In order to do this, you actually have to uh, uh, have vents. That basically the super hot plasma from the uh, upper stage engine has got to go somewhere. Um, so we we're adding an extension to the booster that uh, is, is almost all vent essentially. Uh, so that allows the uh, the upper stage engine plume to uh, go go through the, the the sort of vented extension of the booster and not just blow itself up. Um, so this is the, the most risky thing, I think, for the next flight. To address engine issues noticed during the rocket's first flight, SpaceX engineers are implementing changes to the Raptor's hot gas manifold that directs superheated methane-rich gas toward the combustion chamber. The, the engines on the last rocket were somewhat of a hodgepodge. Those engines were built and tested over a period of a year. We, we have what's called a, we call, we call a, a hot, gas, hot gas manifold. It takes the fuel-rich gas from the, um, the, the, the fuel side power head or, or transfers it to an area above the main chamber where it uh, then mixes with ox-rich gas and gets it goes to the main chamber and combusts. We made a number of improvements to that hot gas manifold, which is arguably the most risky, the, risk, the riskiest part of the engine. It's also something that is subject to hot gas leakage which through the, the bolt holes of the of the fuel manifold, so an improved design of the hot gas manifold as well as um, higher torque of, on the bolts of the hot gas manifold to minimize uh, potential for hot gas fuel leakage uh, at high pressure uh, is perhaps one of the single biggest improvements. Another major issue addressed during the discussion is the damage to the Starship launch pad and the modifications SpaceX implements. There's a massive upgrade of the launch site that's happening. So we're putting roughly 1,000 cubic meters of steel reinforced high strength concrete below the pad. And then on top of that, we have a, a sort of a steel sandwich, which, which is uh, basically a very thick plate, two, two thick plates of steel that, that are welded together uh, with uh, channels uh, going through it. Um, and then th there are perforations in the top. So it's, it's gonna basically blast water upwards while the rocket is uh, over the pad uh, to counteract the massive amount of heat from the booster. Musk said the modifications would leave the pad's base in much better shape than last time. In addition, the rocket will take off at a higher throttle setting to get the vehicle away from the pad faster. Musk believes that upgrades to the launch vehicle, engines, and launch pad will bring success to the next launch, which could happen in about six weeks. Starship 25, the ship that will fly on the second orbital launch of Starship, is currently undergoing engine testing at Starbase.
Ranging from spin prime tests to a six-engine static fire test, this testing series aims to qualify the ship for its flight test. The test on Wednesday afternoon saw the loading of propellants onto the vehicle ahead of the spin prime test. In a spin prime test, the engine's turbo pumps are brought up to their full speed and propellants are pumped through the combustion chamber, but there will be no ignition. Ship 25's first spin prime test happened at 3.24 p.m. on Wednesday with an unknown number of engines. Only the ship's oxygen tank was loaded before the test, implying that only the oxygen turbo pump was tested that day. Venting near the forward flaps of the ship indicates that the oxygen header tank was also filled for the test. According to SpaceX, the next step in Ship 25 testing will be the static fire test. Work on rebuilding and repairing the orbital launch pad is ongoing, piling work has been completed, and teams are installing rebar underneath the launch mount. This work is expected to be finished soon and should be followed by a convoy of concrete trucks to fill up the pit. The concrete foundation will support and anchor the water-cooled steel plates that SpaceX will be installing very soon. Although the launch mount requires six water-cooled steel plates to be installed between its legs, only three will carry the water manifolds. The steel plates are being pre-assembled with the manifolds of the Sanchez site. Two weeks ago, a new set of water tanks were installed on the back side of the launch tower. Several high-pressure gas storage tanks are also installed near the water tanks to pump water to the steel plates at high pressure. This graphic by Ryan Hansen Space will give us an idea of how the deluge system will look once the work is completed. Previously, SpaceX removed portions of the underground pipes that deliver propellant from the tank farm to the launch mount to begin the piling work. Teams have started reinstalling those cryopipes as the piling work is now complete. The cryogenic flex hoses and their hood removed from the booster quick disconnect mechanism were also reinstalled recently. SpaceX has yet to reinstall the ship quick disconnect mechanism removed from the launch tower last month. Starship and super heavy production work are progressing at the build site. Booster 12's methane and oxygen tank sections were fully stacked last week. The primary structure of Booster 12 will be complete once the methane tank section is stacked atop the oxygen tank section. Starship 28 inside the high bay recently received its aft flaps. The payload bay door of Ship 28 was removed several days ago. This panel slides upward to open the payload bay door for Starlink deployment. Ships 24 and 25 were supposed to carry and deploy Starlink satellites during their test flights, but the plan was later cancelled, leading to the door sealing on both ships. Since the door on Ship 28 has not been sealed, SpaceX is likely sticking to the plan of launching Starlink satellites into orbit aboard Ship 28. The sliding panel may have been removed because the panel has been damaged or because SpaceX has a new panel design. A new set of vents has been spotted on Ship 30's nose cone staged at the ring yard near the high bay. The four new vents are arranged symmetrically on the nose cone. Even though it is still too early to tell for sure, it looks like SpaceX wants these new vents to act as reaction control system thrusters. Super Heavy Booster 11 was moved to the Rocket Garden on Saturday, June 24. It now stands beside Booster 10, Booster 4, Ship 26, 27, 15 and 20. Star Factory expansion works are progressing at the production site. SpaceX has completely dismantled the ground fabrication building and the low bay in the last weeks. Teams have also started installing the beams and columns of the Star Factory. Shortly, all the old buildings and production tents will be replaced by the Star Factory, increasing the storage and production capacity at the build site. The new Mega Bay building, which is being constructed north of the existing Mega Bay, has also grown in size in the last few weeks. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. Indonesia launched its first satellite aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket last week. The 4.6 metric ton spacecraft, known as Satria, lifted off on a Falcon 9 rocket from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on June 18. The rocket's reusable first stage came back to Earth eight and a half minutes later and landed on a SpaceX drone ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean, completing its 12th flight. Satria 1 separated from the rocket's upper stage about 37 minutes after liftoff and entered an elliptical supersynchronous transfer orbit. It will take about five months for the spacecraft to reach its 146 degrees east orbital slot via onboard electric propulsion. The satellite will undergo three weeks of testing once it reaches its geostationary orbital slot before going into service. During its 15-year service, the $545 million Satria Wind satellite will provide around 150 gigabits per second of capacity across the thousands of islands in the Indonesian archipelago and surrounding areas.
United Launch Alliance launched a classified National Reconnaissance Office spy satellite on a Delta IV heavy rocket on June 22 from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. The mission, dubbed NROL-68, was ULA's first launch of 2023. About four minutes into the flight, the outer two boosters of the rocket separated, and two minutes later, the core stage separated from the upper stage. At the request of the National Reconnaissance Office, ULA ended the webcast nearly seven minutes into the flight after the nose fairing was jettisoned. Due to the mission's secrecy, there is no publicly available information regarding the parameters and function of the satellite. NROL-68 was the Delta IV Heavy's 15th and penultimate launch before its retirement. ULA is contracted to launch one more mission for the National Reconnaissance Office on the Delta IV Heavy in the first quarter of 2024 from Cape Canaveral. The company then plans to retire the rocket and replace it with the new Vulcan Centaur rocket. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.